Okay. So let's do an example problem. I want to show you how to go about this problem the way I would do it if I wanted to get the basics on how to solve any problem. So there's a windmill, okay? It slows down the incident air. So I have some cross-sectional area, right, of my windmill. Air comes in, turns the blades. The air after is at a, actually a slower velocity. And in the process of that, the air actually fills up a larger volume. So it slows down, but you have to have conservation. So the velocity, so you end up getting a larger cross-sectional area. And so the question, first question is, what is the power produced by the windmill in equation form, assuming there is no pressure drop, mass flow rate is constant, and there is no change in elevation? So now that I did this, and let's say I drew a picture, so let's go up here, there's no pressure drop. So I have some P1, 1 equals in, 2 equals out, okay? I also have some, so my inlet air has a temperature and pressure, it also has a density and whatnot, but there's no pressure drop. Likewise, P2, T2, V2, So I can write the properties of the incoming air. It's at a pressure, it's at a temperature, it has a given specific, right? Specific volume, it has a given velocity. On the output, it comes out at a different, at a velocity, has another pressure, it's at another temperature, it's at another. So I look at the statement, there's no pressure drop. So no pressure drop. P1 equals P2. Delta P, which is pressure drop, equals it, right? Mass flow rate is constant. So I have a mass flow rate of air coming in, and I have a mass flow rate of air after the blades. Mass flow rate is constant. M1 dot equals M2 dot equals M dot. And there's no change in flow elevation. So I could draw some, some height one, and it's the same here. H1 equals H2, delta H. Okay, so I just wrote down some things. So I drew a picture. You can kind of see I have a boundary. I'll put it in orange. I kind of covered up my H there, but you get the idea. So I drew a, a simple picture. I drew a boundary. I identified everything in here as my system. Everything outside is my surroundings. I defined my inputs, which is air, right? It has a pressure, temperature, specific volume. It's coming in at a given velocity, and it has a mass flow rate. So there's also a couple here, some area in. And likewise, I can do the same thing here. I have my outputs. My output is air of a given mass flow rate, which is the same as the flow rate in. It has a pressure, temperature, a specific volume, right, velocity, and then there's this new cross-sectional area. So what is the power produced by the windmill in equation form? So step one was to draw a schematic, try to outline all the properties and everything you can think of, right, like that. So you do that as much as you can just by thinking about it. Next step, and say, it, once you're done, you're done, right? If you can't think of anything more, just move on. So what's the next step? Write the first law. Okay. So I'm going to write the first law in rate form 
in a, a energy balance form. So the energy in my system equals the energy in minus the energy out. My system is the windmill. And I've already wrote this, but let's say one equals in and two equals out. So let's rewrite this. Delta E windmill equals energy one minus energy two. And let's put it in rate form by putting dots above this. Now, assuming that there is, or that the mass flow rate is constant. So this is where we get to, is this a steady state problem? So let's just say we don't know, but we do know almost most things we work on in the class are steady state. But we don't know that yet. But so if we don't know, we don't know if we can make this value zero. How can we figure out if it's steady state? What do we do to think about it to determine if it's steady state? Ninety percent of the time, this equals the rate delta E dot equals zero if it's steady state. So then we have to think of all the forms of the rate of energy in minus the rate of energy out. What I always like to do is I like to think of, is the speed of air changing? Is, the rate, is there an on-off switch? Are we talking about a system that was turned on and then turned off? So up there it said the mass flow rate is constant. So that's basically saying that the velocity of the wind speed at that point is not changing. We're not talking about aircraft where we go through turbulence where there's changes in velocity. We're talking about the windmill. And so in this case, all the air, the energy coming in is air. And it's coming in at a given mass flow rate, which is constant. There's no on-off aspect to this problem. I'm not opening a door and closing it or whatever it might be. So in this case, steady state So let's write this all up so I can expand it. So this one is Q1 dot plus work one dot plus M dot V1 squared over two plus GH, put a one there, plus P1, V1, plus small u1. And then that equals V2 dot plus W2 dot plus M dot V2 squared over 2 plus GH2 plus V2 V2 plus V2. So the problem statement said that m1 dot equals m2 dot, and we just said it's equal to m dot. And we have p1 equals p2 
so let's just say it's equal to P. And there was no change in elevation, so H1 equals H2, which equals H. Is there heat input to my problem? One represents it. Is there a rate of heat input in the problem statement? So we can cross that out. Is there work in? Is there a power input? What is it? Okay, so what you're getting to is, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. So the, the comment was, it's the, it's the wind power in which is spinning the blades. But what is this then? So you're talking about energy due to mass. And so that's this part right here. Right. There's no work input. So I'm not I'm not plugging it, it in to make the bearings magnetic and reduce the friction in it, right? Giving it a little extra power to balance the friction in the bearings or something like that's state of the art what they might do. So there's no work power input. Is there heat input? Is there work output? Where is it? Power output. Does the windmill do work? It doesn't do any work. Is there power output from a windmill? Yeah. Isn't that what we're trying to find? Yep. That's what we're trying to find. And so then it's leaving, then there's energy in the form of mass leaving. So then I can take all this and I can simplify it even more. H1 equals H2, so these cancel out, right? The energy, the internal energy of the air coming in versus the internal energy of the air leaving. How do we know what the internal energy is? What is it a function of? Temperature. And? Pressure. Pressure, right? It's an equation of state, right? So what was the temperature of the air coming in versus the air leaving? The same. And the problem statement said that the pressure was the same. <coughs> the internal energy of the air coming in is equal to the internal energy of the air leaving. Now one thing we didn't talk about, so P1 equals P2, but then we had specific volume one and specific volume two. We didn't talk about changes in density, right? So the, dense, the, the density of the air coming in was the same as the density of the air leaving, so V1 equals V2, right? So basically this is canceled by that. Now if we force the air to stay at the same cross-sectional area, we would have changed, right? Remember how it expanded here? So if we forced it to stay within the same, then the densities would have changed. But we said it expanded to keep constant density. Kind of a, so anyways, I've taken this whole expression and you know, I can write some other things. Q1 dot equals Q2 dot equals zero. Um, what else? V1 equals V2, which equals V. Okay, and then just write out the full thing. Work dot two, which equals power out windmill. And then if I write all this stuff, so I've work dot two, so I have m dot v1 squared over two minus v2 squared over That's the equation form. Yes? Can you explain how you um, determine the internal energy doesn't change? Yeah, so that's so how do we know that? And so we know that internal energy. So really in chapter 2, they don't talk about internal energy at all. But I want to introduce the concept. They talk about equation of state. And 
you should I want you to get in the habit of including these these parts when you're solving a problem right from the get-go right so this is an equation of state the problem statement never said any and we know it can be it's a function of two independent intensive temperature and pressure work the problem statement said so this is the internal energy of the air coming in pressure of the inlet there was no pressure drop so p1 and p2 were equal but it didn't say anything about hot air coming in and the windmill cooling the air right or the air coming in and then friction causes the air to heat up so the temperature of the air coming in was equal to the temperature of the air coming out because the pressure and temperature are the same we know that u1 equals u2 so i think we maybe can do b real quick so what is the radius of, of the downstream wind channel in equation form? Okay. So to do this, we have to consider an elemental area or elemental volume. So I have some delta x and some cross-sectional area. Delta x times a equals my element of volume delta V. So the way I like to look at it is rho equals M over V, which implies M equals rho times V, which implies that M dot equals D ET rho V. And I know that the density isn't changing. And so, which then gives me m dot equals rho v dot. Now if I go back to this expression, so if I want to say d delta x a equals delta v, Just put a delta T here. So I got dx dt times some area equals v dot, which implies that velocity, because that's a velocity. So I just use this density thing, you know, you, you, you're just going to end up memorizing this later on. But the velocity times the cross-sectional area is the same as the volume flow rate. But I just went through how you can do that and you can calculate it. Starting with the elemental area, doing this. And so once I know that, V1, A1 equals V2, A2. I have an expression up here where I can plug in V1 and V2, so I can write out, if I know th this area, A2 equals A1, V1 over V2, and then I can re rewrite the, the channel diameter. Right, <coughs> area pi r squared, so I got equals by R1 squared, V1, V2, divide through, and I can simplify the radius of the channel in terms of knowns. <coughs>